hi in this video we will discuss about aws cloud formation this is an introductory video to give an overall idea of what cloud formation is so let's have an introduction to cloud formation before we start uh, let's uh, discuss uh, something else an example that uh, a scenario that you want to build a house and you want to do it by yourself uh, sort of diy stuff so what you need to do well a lot of things just some example you need to purchase all materials you need to build the house the construction and as part of that you need to do plumbing electrical installation and water sort of things and many more things paperwork and probably before doing that you will purchase the land and so on now if you want to do build a house by yourself it is a of course it's a fun but it might be a hassle now if you could tell someone that you need a house and all the specifications and they do it for you then you could have a feeling that you have actually automated uh, building the house now let's assume that you have uh, some robots they're very smart human-like robots let's say it's, uh, and you just tell the robots that you need a house and you give them all the instructions on how the house will look like what would be the design what kind of uh, resources they should use what kind of materials they should use let's say the quality of um, the material that would be used to build the house and so on so you just specify everything and uh, you give the instruction let's say you have written the instruction in a file in a in a paper and you gave it to the robots or you just give the instruction by uh, recording an audio or video and they are doing everything they are building the house based on your instruction and you feel that you have just automated the task of building the house because you just give the instruction and the house is being built by someone else and this is exactly what cloud formation does for us so cloud formation is just like your robots in the example that we have just seen um, you tell cloud formation what you need and it does those things for you so instead of you do a lot of things you configure a server or you build a website or use some resources to provision um, an application on the cloud you just tell that hey i need this 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 and this is how i want to deploy implement that application can you do that for me you ask cloud formation and cloud formation does that for you so if we want to come with a more formal definition of cloud formation then we can say that it is a service of aws that takes care of provisioning and configuring resources and services and eventually it eliminates the requirement uh, to do those things manually which is uh, automating the manual steps so the way you give instructions to your team of robots to build the house is exactly the way the way you work with cloud formation so you write instructions and tell cloud formation that okay these are the things that i want to achieve can you do that for me please and the file where you write all those things of course it has its own standard it has its own um syntax on grammar um, we'll look into how to write instruction for cloud formation in some other tutorial in some other video um, for the time being it is enough for us to know that those are called templates so the template has its own syntax grammar there are specific ways to write template that we'll see in some other 
video tutorial. So what you do, you write the template and you give it to the uh, to CloudFormation. In other words, in template file, you give the instructional list of the things that you want CloudFormation to do for you so that you don't have to bother, you don't have to spend your time doing all these things. So let's look at an example. You want to have a virtual machine, virtual server, where you want to install a web server and in that web server you want to put a website so that that website can be accessed by people from all over the world. At the same time, for your virtual machine, for your website, you need to ensure, you want to ensure security and user accounts. And now you have two ways to do that. The first one is you can do it manually, which is uh, create a, or launch an instance in EC2, let's say, install the web server on your launched instance, then put the website contents into the correct folder in the web server, configure everything, uh, configure um, as part of your launching instance, you configure the security group, security policy, um, you probably will to create users and so on. So uh, there might be a lot more to the list than I have just mentioned. So this is one way and other the other way could be you just write an instruction in a file which is a cloud formation template and you give it to cloud formation and you tell cloud formation that hey cloud formation can you please do all these things for me I want a virtual machine virtual server I want uh, a web server installed in, in that virtual machine and then I want to put this website there and all these parameters, all these kind of uh, security issues and everything that you mentioned here. And you just give the file, instruction file or template to CloudFormation and you just sit back, relax, probably have a cup of coffee and see it is being done. So you feel that it, you have automated a lot of tasks and so uh, We'll see later on uh, that CloudFormation has a lot of advantages. One of the biggest advantages um, is when you automate tasks by giving the template to CloudFormation, you eliminate uh, the possibility of human errors. Because when you want to do all these things manually, as we see in number one, we might, uh, due to human limitations, uh, human factors, we might uh, make some errors probably a configuration error or some parameter we might enter um, by mistake we might enter wrong parameter and eventually we might find that the things are not working the way it should but if we can write the template and give it to cloud formation and cloud formation will not make any mistakes so in a nutshell um, that is cloud formation cloud formation is one of the Amazon services cloud services where you give instruction as in the form of template where you say the list of things that you want to achieve and cloud formation does those things for you giving you the feeling that the things are being done automatically so that's how cloud formation uh, makes uh, your life easier hi in this video we'll see what is cloud formation stack so to begin with um, we look into an example um, that uh, we want to launch an instance or we want to have a virtual machine and we want to install a web server on that virtual machine and then we'll put a website in that web server in the proper uh, folder and we will have some associated policy which might be users, uh, security and so on. So all these things um, we can automate by using cloud formation that we discussed earlier. For that we write an instruction file which we call template uh, in cloud formation that is called template file where we just write in uh, instruction that uh, hey cloud formation we, we need this, 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 this and that. And we give it to cloud formation and cloud formation follows the instruction and it does the whole thing of, of for us sort of uh, automating the task that we want to do instead of uh, 
carrying out all the tasks and all the configuration manually. So all the things that we want that we put in a template file, all the resources and services resources means uh, the virtual server, the web server, the, the website, fi uh, the files related to the website that we want to launch for, uh, for example, and all the services or the policies, everything uh, is uh, considered by AWS CloudFormation as one stack. So one single unit that is called a stack. And it is a placeholder. We can think of it as a placeholder where the, the defined things that we have defined, uh, whatever we have defined in the template, uh, deployed in one stack or in one confined area. So let's have a, an illustration to understand how a stack might look like. So this is our template file where we have written the instructions and uh, gave it to CloudFormation. So CloudFormation, um, we can store that template on uh, Bucket. We'll see what is Bucket in some other uh, tutorial videos. Um, uh, for the time being, uh, we can say that we can assume that, okay, we are going to store it somewhere in, in the cloud on uh, AWS. Now, from the, uh, from the stored template, and the, because in this template, we gave instruction that uh, we are going to have a virtual machine. On that virtual machine, uh, we will have a web server, and on, in that web server, we'll have, let's say, some web pages or one web page. And for all those things, we have some uh, associated policies. And so this whole collection that is deployed, because uh, before we come to this point, when we were here, it, it was just a template file, but now things are being actualized. So we actually have the different things, the resources and policies, services that uh, we defined in the template file. So all these things that are actualized, that are deployed from a template file is uh, thought of uh, being in a confined area, which is known as a stack. So this is a concept, a conceptual uh, separ uh, separation from uh, one template to another template, uh, uh, which uh, makes uh, things to manage and uh, for other purposes, it, uh, it makes things easier. And of course, all the stacks that we have are attached to the template because the template is the basis to make, uh, to develop or to deploy uh, resources as one combined unit, which uh, AWS uh, calls a stack. So to sum up, a stack is the area, the, the uh, we can say uh, a, a room where all the resources and uh, everything that is deployed due to following uh, the instruction in a template, they are thought of as a single unit and that single unit is known as a stack in uh, AWS. Hi, in this video, we'll talk about CloudFormation template. We'll look into a template to get an idea on how a template looks like. So let's get started. As we discussed earlier in some uh, earlier uh, uh, videos, that a declaration or instruction to deploy resources uh, to deploy stack um, on AWS is called a cloud formation template, and it can be written in uh, JSON or YAML. So. To learn templates and to write your own template, you need to learn either JSON or YAML, which is outside of the scope of this uh, course. However, um, it is not uh, uh, a hard one. You can easily learn a JSON or YAML. And these files you can create by using any text editor. Um, I personally prefer any simple uh, text editors like Notepad, uh, which do not have a lot of formatting options. And um, it's as I said that it's very easy to learn JSON or YAML, and you need to learn them. Um, I, I, either of them, not uh, you don't necessarily need both of them um, to be able to write templates. And 
we can also edit any existing templates. So in this uh, course, so wherever we have any example of templates, we will uh, use the JSON uh, syntax. But um, at this point, with this video tutorial, even if you don't know, if and, or even if you don't have any idea about JSON or YAML, uh, should not be a problem to follow. And uh, a template is saved as a um, simple text file. Normally it has uh, either of these four um, extensions, .json or .yaml or .template or .txt. At this point, probably we should have an upfront node that uh, a bucket on AWS is a storage space created uh, in the same region where the stack is uh, created. So um, let's look into how it uh, looks like a template. It's, uh, as I said, that it's very easy to understand, it's very, very easy to learn JSON, and even if we don't know JSON, um, it should not be a big deal for us to understand what is going on and what we are talking about. If you look carefully, uh, this is the standard template that you need to follow, and uh, I won't be much technical here, um, but if you have a programming background, if you're not a bit of programming, then you know that uh, this is one block, so from here and from here is one block and within this block we have sub blocks this block starts here and uh, ends here and this block starts here and ends here so this block belongs to this part and uh, hello bucket and the hello bucket and everything all together this part belongs to the resources uh, block and they all together makes the whole document so um, if you look carefully, you'll see this is a reserved keyword for uh, AWS, which is resources. And it means that we are declaring a resource. Uh, we give the name hello bucket. It is our own defined name, let's say. And the type is an AWS S3 bucket. So to write a template, we need to know what are the standard keywords. This, you cannot make any exception. If you want to have an AWS S3 bucket, you have to write in this. So what types are available there? And we said resources. What else could go there in um, a template? This is uh, what you can learn uh, in detail uh, from AWS website. The best place for any resources on uh, any AWS services and uh, if you go to AWS website and uh, look for CloudFormation user uh, guide, you will find a detailed explanation on um, CloudFormation, which includes the detailed discussion on the templates as well. So uh, this is a very a simple view of a template where we are asking the cloud formation to allocate a resource, which is a, a bucket, and we are giving the name hello bucket. So let's see a bit uh, more complex one here. So we have here another example. Um, so here we see that the resource, uh, so we have our resource called hello bucket, and we said the type is uh, an AWS S3 bucket. It might have some other properties as well that we can define. So here you see properties. Um, you see access control is a public read and website configuration. But what is the configuration? The index document uh, by default should be this uh, this page. If you're into web you, the website development, uh, you know that. And uh, if there is any error, so it will uh, display the this page. So the main point here is that you declared a uh, a resource you gave the name of the resource what type it is you're saying and also you can specify properties and um, th there's a lot more to the story as I said that you need to refer to the whole um, user guide for the, the reference manual that you can find on AWS website so this is um, 
a bit more elaborated version of the previous one. Now let's look into um, another example to understand a bit further on template. So here we have another um, template file. If you um, are familiar with the EC2 that we have in some other video tutorials, we know that we um, we need to keep here. We need uh, to configure security group, and we need to specify the ports, the services that we need. So, if you look carefully in this template, you see that in the resources we are creating a uh, one EC2 instance, and we're saying type and properties. And here, if you look, we have a new thing which is called ref reference instances security group and if you look further elsewhere in the document you will find instance security group so instance security group has this has block up to this point if you look carefully you can find out that uh, the innermost is this and the, this one paired with this one this one paired with this one and this one is paired with this one so this is the block which uh, defines what is the security group and if you see that um, thus in the security group uh, you have a description which describes what it, this is all about it's a, it's um, an appling SSH port, um, port accessible by port 20, uh, 22 and um, what protocol is being used and uh, we see that the security group ingress means the incoming traffic to the web server is through port 22 and uh, if we, uh, as we have seen um, in EC2 tutorial that uh, by this CIDR IP we mean we want to access it from an, a, anywhere open access so um, this is the security group that we are referring here so the moment we refer here this reference looks for this security group the same name and understands that by this security group group we are referring to th this one so the the reason we can write uh, like this is uh, if you even write this block so that let's say for example if you have a, the, a very big template file with uh, 500 uh, lines of of code you, you can have a well, when you master on this a template you see that the templates could be really big a really long one so you might need to use the same security group in a lot of places in different places so you just create once and you just simply refer them as and when and where wherever you want to use it however if we come back to this next a key name so you give the key name and so other properties so this is another um a bit more elaborated version of uh, a template file so here the new thing that we saw is the reference let's see um, another example so here we have another example uh, further um, explanation on the parameters so now here you see that if um, you use the template um, for one specific region uh, then you can um, sort of um, fix the key name but if you want to use the template in different locations then the key pair will be different in that case um, what you do you declare parameters parameters in a non-technical way if we say in here we define the things that we want to take input from the users so it, instead of hard coding uh, the key by defining parameters like this we are what we are achieving here that when we run this template this template will ask the user to enter the key name the key pair value because this is the key name is we are giving a re reference to the key name which is a parameter so on the screen the users whoever is configuring whoever is running the template we see that uh, when there is 
the resources are being deployed um, AWS is asking for the this parameter which is key name in this case so that is why, uh, why we use parameters and uh, if we keep moving on we look into um, another um, example which again um, just a, a bit elaboration of uh, previous one here the only difference is that you have uh, parameters uh, key name so and you also have a parameter for what let's say if it is for a WordPress website it's a WordPress user you can give a default value and you can give other specifications as you can see that what type of input is it is and uh, what would be maximum and minimum length what pattern you are going to allow you can also have uh, define the web server port which port is the default and what could be the minimum value of the port and maximum value of the port and so on this is just for your um, um just to give you an idea that what how a template is created this is um i would say beginning of the story when it comes to templates not the all of the story it's just um, an abstract of what a, t a cloud formation template is so um, to conclude, uh, these points are very important. Um, we need to keep in mind that uh, we discussed just the very basics uh, of uh, cloud formation templates, which will help you to understand the templates. Um, if, if you look into some um, templates on AWS, uh, now you will understand that what is written and you, uh, it's very important to note that if you want to become a guru or a solution developer on AWS, you need to learn template in depth. And we see just a, at the introduction level of the templates up here because um, uh, learning templates in detail is uh, sort of out of the scope for this uh, course. However, as uh, I discussed earlier, that uh, the best place to find the fully explained and total reference is the AWS website. If you go there and search for cloud formation user guide, you will find everything about cloud formation and everything about templates. Also, um, for any other web service, it's uh, AWS service, not just uh, cloud formation. Um, the best resource you can find is on the a a AWS uh, website. Um, just search for developer guide or user guide you should be able to find for example you can search for ec2 user guide in the same way you can search for um, cloud formation user guide however um, so the concluding note is that we have seen just the very basics of template to understand what goes on and how a template looks like and you this is a a topic that uh, you cannot avoid if you want to become a guru. Um, hi, in this video, we'll talk about cloud formation designer. So let's get started from uh, AWS console from the home screen. Uh, we'll click on services and uh, we'll go to cloud formation. And here we can design our template. We can write uh, any template using uh, JSON or YAML and save them in text files. Or alternatively, we can, uh, AWS uh, has the provision where we can uh, graphically, visually design what we need and the template will be automatically created. And that is the whole purpose of a design template. A very nice tool provided by AWS. So let's see how it works. So I am clicking on design template. Now let's say that we want to deploy a web server, just a basic one, and how we can do, do that. So once we click on um, the template designer, you see uh, this is screen. Uh, the different parts here here is the resource type and this is where you will see your um, template that will be auto generated and 
you can switch from JSON to YAML. Uh, for example, if you look here, this is in JSON template. If I click here, it automatically um, switches to its uh, YAML version. We'll, we'll be using JSON uh, for this uh, video. And here you see the updates messages, and this is the um, working area where we'll work with different uh, elements uh, that we need in an uh, in a template. And uh, let's see how uh, we use these different uh, parts of the screen of, of the designer as you keep going. Uh, before I start, uh, you might be interested to see that we can start a new template we can open an existing template we can save or we can use sa uh, sample templates and some other icons uh, as you will go over then the tooltip for example this one uh, well, is uh, pretty much a self-explanatory for example this one says if when we have a diagram here then this helps us to download the diagram as um, an image and uh, you can maximize or minimize this pane but i'll just keep it like this so this template um, its name is uh, new the dot template by default but i want to change the name of this template so i click on template here i click on this icon um let's say i want to name this as web server dot template so i dot template i type the name web server and i press enter now here you see that it's uh, it has been changed now this this tutorial is about uh, Cloud formation the template designer, not about all the elements that you can use in the um, as part of AWS. That's uh, the list is huge, and uh, that's why as our main purpose is to know how to work with uh, template designer. We won't go into much detail of what um, resource. Uh, has what meaning what is the purpose that we'll see in the relevant tutorials so for example let's say um so to keep going um let's say we want to deploy a web server so we are creating a template and we are visually creating a template so from the left resource pane we select ec2 and here it has the available resources under ec2 um we will select a vpc virtual private cloud so i just drag and drop it here we need a number of elements here as you'll see as we keep going so i just increase its size so that it can accommodate everything that we need so this VPC probably um, not a very good name here, as you can see. So uh, we can actually by using my mouse scroll scrolling button and uh, just dra um, dragging and dropping, I can change them. I want to change this name because you see this is an AWS two. Uh, when I hover over uh, the resource you can see now that it's a aws ec2 vpc and its name is ec2 vpc something but we will change it to something that we can remember so let me right click on this and i have this menu and this menu shows um, the link to relevant documentation i can delete this one i can duplicate if i want if i need more than one element i can just duplicate by clicking this in this case, this is the icon that we are interested in, Edit Properties. Here you see that as soon as I selected this, uh, in the template, you see under Resources, this resource has been created. If you compare this name, and here you see that the name, uh, you will see that it, this is what automatically created. But the name is not very user-friendly, very friendly for us to remember. So what we'll do, we'll change the name here. Let's say we'll just delete the name and we'll give the name vpc 
and the designer is out of click it says we need to hit refresh because we have changed the name so i am clicking refresh now if i go here you will see that the name has been changed to vpc because we changed the name here okay so what we're going to um, add in this virtual private cloud is one subnet so added a subnet by dragging and dropping um just increasing a bit more because i know based on my plan i'm going to have um, an ec2 instance here as well so once again in the same way let me change the name of this as uh, here we have subnet subnet out of uh, date so refreshed now you see it is its name is submit. I'm going to keep an instance here, a virtual server here instance from left brain drag and drop. This is the instance. Uh, I will so the instance is selected here, the instance. I want to change its name as web server. Let's say web server. Of course, I need to refresh as we have seen before. So this is the web server. Also, as part of, um, so I think I can minimize this a bit. Yes, I don't need anything else here. Um, now, what I need is I need um, a security group for my web server. So I will uh, drag and drop the security group here. just making it nice uh, it really doesn't matter whether you put it here or here but i'm just putting it here just to make it look good so uh, this is the security group i am going to change the name to web server security group web server security group so you might have a question in your mind that do i need to change the name no you don't but uh, the default names are not very human friendly. It's hard to remember, so we will always try to put uh, give names that uh, make sense to us and that's uh, easy to remember. So refreshing, and I have the latest version here. And also, I am going to add a, a routing table here. Um, let me. Expand it a bit, and I'm going to. This is the route, route table. I'm going to change it as web server route table. Refreshing to update the design, and when, within the routing table, um, we're going to drag and drop a routing in uh, a resource route. And once again, this one is automatically selected here. I'm going to change this resource name to um, web server route. It makes more sense to us. And another thing that I need to implement a basic web server is the um, internet gateway. So they are sort it um, alphabetically so i can go on i internet here we go this is internet gateway um so this is the internet gateway i am going to give it this internet gateway so i'm going to give its name as um web server internet gateway just use any name that makes sense to you um, i'm just giving the name that is convenient for me to remember um, so i'll refresh now here you see that it's a web server internet gateway this one is web server security group this one is web server route this one is web server uh, route table uh, this one is web server and this one is subnet and this one is vpc now what we'll we'll do is we will connect these resources we have uh, dragged and dropped the resources now it's time for us to connect those resources 
And so for this implementation, um, I'll just zoom a bit, um, probably a bit less. So now what we're going to do, so this is the VPC we have. We have the VPC web server subnet instance uh, routing table and root um, the internet gateway. Uh, you need an internet gateway to connect to and from outside uh, world from your virtual private cloud. So what I, we're going to do is we're going to connect this VPC with the internet uh, gateway. So if we, I'll just drag it a bit here. If we take our mouse cursor over here, we'll see that the name is VPC Gateway Attachment. I'll just drag and drop this connection here. You see the moment I have started dragging, the VPC is highlighted, which means this internet gateway can be connected to this VPC. So I'm connecting uh, this and then we are going to connect the routing table, uh, the route to the internet gateway by using the gateway ID. So let's have a look here. You see this, if uh, they have different, um, there for different purposes. If I click, uh, go on this one, I see that this is for the gateway ID. So it is for the internet gateway. So I should, uh, drag and drop this connection to the you see the gateway is automatically highlighted when i started dragging so i connected this root and also the root depends on gateway so i click the depends on or once again i click the depends on and i collect it uh, connect it with the, the gateway Depends on drag and drop, just connect it, and then we also have instance. Instance will depend on root because instance the web server needs the root to have traffic uh, incoming and outgoing traffic. So depends on. Let's find the depends on the one which is depends on. Um, we will discuss about the rest later on. So here is the depends on. It depends on the root. So I'll drag and drop. Here you see this is highlighted. So I'll just connect. And then I will connect the route table with the subnet because they have a dependency. And if we don't um, create the proper dependency our stack will not work because this is the template that we're creating visually creating the template that we will use later on to create a stack so um the 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 routing table is also depending on uh, the subnet so what we'll do is we will go for the depends on and then we will connect it to the subnet. So that's how we uh, use uh, designer, CloudFormation designer to design a template. And as you keep going, your template, your template gets changed. You can just switch to from JSON to YAML, um, just like this. Just clicking, uh, it's as simple as that. And also you need to save your template. You can save it locally or you can save it uh, on the Amazon storage uh, so saving locally is just as simple as uh, saving any file so let's see how we can save it so if i click here save then it gives me the option whether i want to save it as a local file or as um, amazon s3 uh, in s3 bucket so let's me um 
save it uh, locally I'll click on local file and I'll save it as a web server or template I'll hit save and it is asking you so I'll say yes I want to save it and it is normally saved in the download folder if I open my download folder um, let me just change the views for better viewing so you see that I have the web server dot uh, template is stored here and also and also um, f by using a, a single click of this button we can export this diagram as an image so let me just show you very quickly download diagram as an image uh, just clicking on that save file um, clicking on save going back to my downloads folder and here you see in as png format the diagram has been saved so that's how we work with cloud formation designer we have saved the template that we're going to use it later on uh, uh, in this uh, 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 by now we have seen how we can uh, add the resources and connect to them and we also need to add the parameters and uh, if we need to we, we need to also add mapping so uh, before we can create a stack because uh, just uh, providing resources and connecting uh, is not uh, enough uh, to create a stack we need to also uh, uh, design the uh, mention specify the parameters so by now uh, we have seen how we can graphically design a template and uh, have the resources um, and uh, connect them rename them we have also seen the template which automatically generated that we can quickly switch between json and yaml and we have also seen how we can save the file um, so that we can use later on so uh, however we have saved it locally so we'll, we'll see how we can add uh, properties and other required things uh, in this stack in next tutorial video. Thank you. Hi, this video is about uh, cloud formation uh, template designer. This is part two of uh, this uh, on this topic on template designer we will uh, see a few bits and pieces uh, in this video that we left out of uh, the first video so for this we need to go to cloud formation by clicking i click on services and then cloud formation and uh, we go to design template we previously uh, created a template and uh, visually created a template where we added resources and saved it so instead of creating a new template now um, we will load that one so we'll open from this icon we will hit on open and uh, we saved our locally in my download folder which is here web server the template so I'll just select that one and open that file and you see the file that we created in previous uh, tutorial video is here so now um to complete this stack we need to add uh, properties and if we want we can add some optional components so how we can do that so if i click on on the canvas any any area here you see template and components so this is the template here you can add any properties to any resources that we have on the other hand if i click on any specific component let's say i click on vpc in this vpc uh, i can after after selecting vpc or any specific component let's say any specific component regardless i can i can uh, change the properties um, of uh, that resource accordingly and uh, for example we can add some uh, parameters that we have seen in our uh, introductory video on cloud formation whatever we want to do we can add the 
code uh, here and uh, one thing is to note that if we click on this uh, open space then our template and components it becomes uh, uh, the template white on the other hand when you click on any specific resource then it becomes uh, the properties becomes uh, that uh, resource specific and once we we mention all our required properties and uh, mapping whatever we need uh, if we have then once we are ready uh, we can click on this button which says create a stack and before that we always uh, we will keep this check because it validates the template checks for syntactical and any kind of uh, anomalies if there is then it will give you an uh, error uh, that we have seen previously so if you uh, when you give the properties that you need um, you know, and uh, based on that properties you will be able to create the stack just by clicking on this button and uh, as this uh, tutorial was mainly to show you um, how to work with the uh, cloud formation template designer we will not go into details of what kind of properties we might need it depends on the scenario here we wanted to just show our, our basic web server if we wanted to design a template uh, there's a lot more uh, to add in, for example uh, to properties and other stuffs but however i'll keep it out of the scope of this video tutorial um, but once again, uh, as I mentioned in some other uh, tutorials, that the best resource for AWS is the AWS website itself. So if and you need to know uh, in depth about templates to become a guru on uh, on AWS. So let me quickly show you where you can find the documentation for templates or for anything any any other AWS services. If you go to the AWS website, if you click on menu and uh, then if you go on documentation, okay, here, here one thing is uh, in services, if you click on services, as you can see that cloud formation is under management tools. So, so um, we need to go to the documentation and we need to go to the uh, management tools management tools now here we have cloud formation so we are on the documentation side we're going to the documentation as you can see uh, management tool from documentation i came to the management tools and then i went to the cloud formation and i'm clicking on that now we have the documentation here let's say user guide so if i click on pdf might take uh, some time for the PDF to load and then we'll have uh, everything about cloud formation so so while that uh, the PDF is being loaded we can just have a quick look so that, uh, just to give you that's a, um, a quick overview that from left pen you have the resources here you can see all the temp template um, related things, condition and metadata and other things. You can manually add um, properties. Uh, when you click on, on the canvas, it becomes the template white. Um, and when you click on a specific resource, it automatically changes to that resource specific uh, uh, specifications. So for example, uh, you can add properties and uh, everything. And also we can just quickly switch between JSON and YAML version as you can see and uh, so let us go back to that AWS documentation so here you see this is the one user guide from AWS um, I must say that this is uh, the best resource on any AWS is you can find on AWS website and here if you uh, if you scroll down uh, uh, and uh, go to the table of contents, you will see that it has everything about cloud formation, including uh, templates. It has a lot of examples um, uh, how to deploy different kinds of servers, for example, web server, for example, LAMP, uh, 
and uh, everything about template you can, you can and everything about cloud formation and also you know, about template you can find on the AWS website and uh, I would strongly suggest you to go through the documentation on AWS website not only for cloud formation for any other service as I um, uh, as I say that the best resource you can find is on the AWS website itself yeah so that's all about uh, cloud uh, formation template designer and uh, when you go through the documentation in detail uh, you you will find a lot of templates which will make your life easier instead of um, writing the codes uh, again uh, so you, you will be able to learn the template basics you will be able to pick a template and deploy stacks and everything um so before we come uh, we end this video we're on the designer template designer uh, once again it's always uh, you can find the best resource on the aws website and that's how we can use cloud formation template designer to des visually design template and also we can look into the existing templates which might help us to copy and paste co uh, codes into our template instead of um, starting everything or writing everything from scratch and it will make our life further easier thank you